Hello everyone, my name is Zach and you're watching another Bite Size Build video. Today I'm going to show you how I built this mousetrap powered water bottle rocket launcher. This is a fun summer project that you can do with your kids and all it requires is a few cheap parts from the hardware store. This project dates back to something that my dad and I built when I was a kid. The basic idea is that you get a soda bottle like this and a piece of half inch PVC piping. The size of the PVC piping is perfect to fit that soda bottle right over there and it actually creates a pretty good seal. It doesn't matter if you use a larger two liter size or one of these smaller size, they both will work. The basic idea is that you get a soda bottle like this and you fill it up with a little bit of water. Now the size of the half inch PVC piping is perfect to fit the soda bottle right over there and it actually creates a pretty good seal. Once you figure out a way to lock on that soda bottle, you can pump it full of air pressure using either like a bike pump or an air compressor. Once that pressure gets high enough, you release the lock and the soda bottle will shoot off up into the air. Construction of this is super simple. I'm gonna cut two eight inch pieces of that half inch PVC piping and I'm gonna join them together in a 90 degree elbow. The soda bottle will slide down on the vertical piece and then I'll fit a cap onto the horizontal piece. On that end cap, you'll wanna either put a valve for like a bike pump or in my case, since I'm using an air compressor, I'm just gonna use an air compressor adapter. So I'll go ahead and start cutting those pieces to length and I'll start mocking up some way to lock that soda bottle onto that vertical piece. I've got the compressor out and I've got the regulator set to 30 PSI just to do a couple of quick tests. For now, I'm just gonna hold the soda bottle with my fingers and then release it. So here we go. Whoa, that was pretty awesome. All right, test number two. That was pretty good. I'd say that probably went, what? 20 or 30 feet in the air. Next, I've got to figure out a way to lock the soda bottle on there while the compressor is filling it up with air because we don't want this thing to launch prematurely. We want to lock it into place while it's filling up with air and then have a controlled release while it launches. I've seen a lot of these designs on the internet use zip ties that kind of create like a circular lock that kind of holds them into place and then you kind of slide them out of the way. Um, it's kind of a clumsy solution in my opinion, so I think I'm going to come up with something better. What I'm thinking about doing is using that flange at the bottom to create kind of a fork that kind of goes around and holds that into place while while it's being filled up with air. So I'm gonna go ahead and mock that up using cardboard. What I'll probably end up doing is 3D printing a lot of this design because that's quick and easy for me. So what I need to do is design some sort of base for this all to attach to, and then I need to design kind of a channel for this locking fork to slide in and out of. What I'm thinking about doing is having this spring loaded so that it always returns to the locked position. And so in, in order to do that, I need some sort of spring. So I talked to my brother who's a mechanical engineer and we were brainstorming back and forth, and he came up with a really great idea. He suggested that I use a mouse trap like this. So I'm gonna do that. This mouse trap has only killed like three or four mice, so it should be pretty clean. No, I'm just kidding, this is brand new. So I'm gonna go jump on the computer and start the design work in Fusion 360. I've been working on the design in Fusion 360 and I've got it to a point where I think I'm ready to print. But before I do that, I'm gonna walk you through and show you how this design works. The first thing I added was the two pieces of PVC joined by that 90 degree elbow. Then I added the two liter soda bottle. I think it's important to note here that I actually didn't have to design every little piece you see in this model. There are really great online repositories, for example, GrabCAD, where you can go and find a lot of everyday objects. In this case, I was able to find the soda bottle, the 90 degree elbow, and the mouse trap already modeled up, so that saved a lot of work. The next piece I added was the locking fork piece that goes around the the neck of the bottle. With Fusion 360, I was able to add joints, which constrains the motion of the parts. I was worried that there might be too much friction with those two plastic pieces sliding on one another. So I went to the hardware store and I picked up this aluminum channel. That locking fork piece is gonna ride inside this channel and I think it'll be a lot less friction. Next, I put the mouse trap in and I needed to design a mechanical interface between the mouse trap and the locking fork so that the mouse trap spring would keep that locking fork open. Finally, I designed this little latch that will keep the locking fork in place once you push it in. I'm gonna thread a little string into this pulley so that when you pull the string, it'll actually push down on the latch and release the mechanism. Now that I've got this design, it's time to print the parts out and put it all together.
now it's time to launch this thing. I'm gonna launch the first couple without any water in there to see how high they go, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of water to see if it makes a difference. All right, it's locked, it's armed, it's ready to go. Launch in three, two, one. Oh, come on, seriously? I'm having a lot of problems with the release mechanism on this first design. As you saw in my first attempt, the bottle is just not releasing. It works great sitting here when the bottle's empty, but as soon as I pressurize the bottle, it creates a lot of upward force, which adds a lot of friction to that release mechanism, and it gets to the point where the mouse trap is just not strong enough to pull that locking fork free. So I went ahead and I designed version two of this launcher. The goal with this second version is to get a lot more mechanical advantage out of the mouse trap to be able to pull harder on that locking fork. In this version, I've added this extra valve here to make it easier to load and unload the rocket. To release the rocket, I've added this little pull string here that allows you to release the locking fork. I've done a bunch of testing, and while it's not perfect, it's definitely an improvement over version one. So with that, I think I'm ready to launch. But before I do that, I wanna let you know how you can support this channel. You can become a Bite Size supporting member in one of two ways. You can visit patreon.com forward slash bite size, or you can support through YouTube memberships by clicking the join button below. When you become a Bite Size supporting member, you'll gain access to early release videos, behind the scenes content, and monthly video hangouts. I've been working really hard lately to create more value and content for those people who choose to support me. If you if you've enjoyed watching these videos, I would really appreciate the support. If not, no big deal. Now let's go launch this thing. Okay, so the water bottle rocket is ready to go. It's locked into place. All I have to do is arm it by twisting the valve and I'm ready to launch. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. <laughs> Whoa, holy crap. Holy crap. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this video and it inspired you to build something fun this summer. If you're interested in building your own, check out my website where I'll have a build article as well as the 3D printing files for you to purchase. This design is not perfect. There are so many things I want to improve on, so I'm going to be revisiting this project in my next video. The biggest thing I want to improve is to be able to launch this rocket remotely. So I'm going to design some electronics as well as a remote control that has a missile switch on it. So stay tuned for part two of this project. That pretty much wraps up this video. If you're new to Bite Size, you may not know that I make a lot of other cool project videos like this. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to Bite Size, and you can keep up to date with the projects that I'm working on. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. My name is Zach, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Oh, I forgot about my slushy. That's really good.